Oldest child. Personal best. Personal best? Best chicken. <laughs> you can't beat that. Yeah. Hey, I'm James from Sokodad Barbecue, and I'm doing something I never do. I'm recording this section after the taste test because what just happened replaced everything that I wanted to share before. And I wanna focus more on the result of that taste test and how you can recreate it on something like my La Piazza Piccolo wood fired oven or Kamado Joe Big Green Egg or a variety of other cookers. Because while everybody was not comfortable to come on camera, the round of applause coming from inside the house, you might have even picked up on camera. And so I'm gonna build off of what I did differently and how easy it is to recreate at home. So without further ado, let me share the secrets behind today's overwhelming success. So one of the reasons I love products like my La Piazza Piccolo wood fired oven or my Kamado Joe is their ability to do retained heat cooking. I even did an experiment in my Kamado Joe recently where I practically closed the vents and I was able to hot hold a brisket and finish that overnight for 11 hours just using a lot of that stored energy. That idea is what inspired me to try this in my wood fired pizza oven. I was able to sample a bison tri-tip roast from Wild Fork and like poultry, this is incredibly lean and we don't want to overcook it and risk drying it out. And using gentle retained heat is an amazing way to keep lean cuts incredibly moist and full of flavor. So let me take you back a little bit earlier today. You could do this the day before or first thing in the morning like I did when we're gonna do a couple things uh, that really are behind the secret for success today. So the first is going to be how we prep our bird and I'm gonna share my compound butter injection method as well as a homemade rub. The second key component is going to be in the technique, how we start and build up our coal bed. And that is uh, something that uh, you'll rejoin me a little bit closer to dinner time. And the third component here is the Hey Grill Hey Alabama white sauce that I shared in my Kamado Joe Chicken 101 video. If you haven't tried this, it is lights out. And I really wanted to spend some more time in this video versus my 101 video, bringing a couple other flavors together, particularly in the compound butter that I think would pair brilliantly. That was the hypothesis. It's now confirmed with something like an Alabama white chicken. So let me take you back, show you how to prep the chicken and I'll rejoin you a little bit later on. I'll tell you exactly what you need to know how to build the fire. So our first order of business is to make our Alabama white sauce. The perfect time to make this is if you have the time and preparation a day in advance, but you can easily do the same as me and do it early the same day that you're planning to cook that. So we've already got one cup of mayo and our apple cider vinegar together. I'll put the exact amount up on the screen, our cayenne pepper, our salt, our lemon juice and horseradish. And this is a tablespoon or two tablespoons of brown sugar and one tablespoon of brown mustard. The last thing that I need is a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. So I'll just quickly grind this up. Got a little bit too much. Add that into my ingredients, my dry ingredients. Save that for our chicken rub. But now I wanna to start to mix this together and whisk everything really well. So take a fast forward, add in our dry cayenne pepper our salt as well as our black pepper, our lemon juice and horseradish, and then our brown sugar and yellow mustard. Give this a good whisk. Okay, this looks good to hit the refrigerator. Shout out to Hey Grill Hey for sharing this recipe. This will be good later today, uh, but we can keep it in the refrigerator for as long as a month. Not that this is gonna survive a month in our house. So I'll get the chicken, rejoin you a couple minutes and we're ready to start prepping our bird. Okay, next let's start our first stage prep on our chicken and chicken loves more than almost anything, a great salt dry brine. That's really going to help two things. One, dry out the skin so that we get a better finished product. So it's a little bit crispier. And two, it's going to help the salt penetrate down into our whatever protein we're cooking and really highlight the natural flavor in this case of this bird. So I've got everything I need glove just to keep everything clean so I can switch back and forth. I've got my Dow Strong Chef knife. Let's get this out. And we are going to spatchcock this bird. Let me show you how to do that really easily. You can do that with a pair of sharp kitchen scissors or with a good knife. Either work just as well. It's a matter of what you're comfortable with. And since we're gonna have a little bit of extra trimming and things like that to do with the skin neck here, I just find a good butcher's knife is that much easier to work with. So make sure before you do anything that uh, you know which side of your bird you're working with. So this is our breast side. We want to go to the spine and I'm going to start just by drawing lines right down the back of our bird. And the only tricky area right here is right around our thigh. So we want to be really close and just with a little bit of pressure, follow the spine with our knife. And just like that, 
you can see we are through. Easy peasy, when you're using a sharp knife, I'll take you fast forward. I'm gonna do the exact same thing here on the other side. There we go, we're free. We can put that in a chicken stock pile if you want or something like that. Make your own stock. So next uh, is optional cleanup, I highly recommend it. So we've just got a couple little bone shards, those you absolutely want to remove. The other thing that I like to remove is this cartilage that's running through our bird. And so to do that, I'm just gonna start by tracing along the cartilage, which is going to help it make easier to find and to get it to pop out when we do our spatchcock. So you don't wanna to push too hard here. You notice I'm taking care smaller than a 10 inch knife is easier for this part. But by drawing a little bit of lines, it's just gonna make it easier to work under that so we don't go through and puncture our skin. So now I'm going to flip the bird over, press down, which is gonna break the breastbone here, and make it easier to find that. Trace right along. There'll be sort of a long piece here you'll see in a second that will run right down the middle. And so I'm just shaving along the bone side, letting the, putting a little bit of upwards pressure lifting up and the weight of the chicken is falling down. So that way we're not gonna be losing a lot of protein in the process. Do the same thing here on the other side, just to release some of our protein from the bone. Give this a pull. And if we're lucky, we're gonna get one piece, almost. So now that we have this keel bone out of the middle, just a little bit more trimming to do here. The last piece broke up. This is going to allow us to slice right down the bird. This is really only a minute, minute and a half max if you're new to it, extra work, but it's gonna help make a final presentation look that much better. Take it fast forward while I just clean up any of these other loose pieces here that I missed. Optional, but we can remove the rib cage while we're here just by grabbing that and again, tracing underneath, making sure not to poke through. We just have a couple bones to navigate. That's nearly all out, one little piece left. Repeat over here. And so that part adds about another minute. But this is just gonna allow us now to get our seasoning directly on the protein instead of trying to go through this silver skin as well as the rib cage. And it's gonna make the presentation just that much easier to work with. So all we have now is sort of the main chicken wing bones that are attached in here. I'm gonna leave that along with everything else in the thighs. Just gonna clean up again any of this straggly, loose stuff that doesn't look very appetizing. We don't want to eat. Okay, this looks good. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna get some diamond crystal kosher salt on now to start our dry brine and get this in the refrigerator until we're ready to cook it later on this evening. And that, even uh, though it's not over 24 hours, this is still gonna be better than doing it right before we go on the grill because it's gonna give the salt time to penetrate, as well as some of the cool air in the refrigerator, time to help dry out some of this skin. You can see we did a good job. We didn't poke through our presentation side anywhere. It's good. Transfer this to a pan and into the refrigerator. So for this cook, we're gonna want a hot, real wood fire. But to get started, we wanna clean out our oven from our previous cook, remove our ash. Okay, we've got some wood to build our fire. I'm gonna use oak because hardwood is going to give us a high temperature as well as long lasting coals. Let's build a little campfire here in the back. You notice I'm not quite in the back corner. We're gonna move our coal bed over. This is gonna help just accelerate getting our stone as well as our oven five inches of insulation fully heat soaked. Grab our grill wizard grill gun, fire it up. We're gonna let this burn into a hot coal bed. Vents all the way open. So while our wood-fired oven is getting nice and hot, we're gonna to get to work on a compound butter. Now you have a couple choices with a compound butter. One, we could just make something up like this and you could lift the skin and then slather the compound butter underneath the skin. This is a great way to get these flavor uh, ingredients that we're gonna to bring together under the skin. The other option uh, that I'm gonna do today is a meat injector, which if you've watched the channel before, you know I have a love-hate relationship. Lately, I love it. It's absolutely worth it. My first experience with this, I was injecting a pork butt and it exploded. So definitely a bit of a learning curve, but I think it is well worth it. So this is just a cheap one I got off of Amazon. So to make a compound butter, 
this is really important on something like a chicken. One, uh, since we did the dry brine today uh, in the morning and we're gonna be cooking the chicken today, that almost doesn't even matter because even if we let it sit overnight, salt doesn't pass through skin and fat the same way as it passes through the protein, which is why we season on both sides. But that doesn't get a lot of other flavor ingredients down inside. The other issue is for something like aromatics, like rosemary or garlic, these tend to burn up on the outside. Even at gentle temperatures, they can't withstand the same uh, exposure to heat. And by rendering them down into a compound butter and injecting that, we get a great fresh herb flavor or the brightness uh, of something like lemon I'm gonna add in, a little bit of garlic or rosemary, uh, and I'm gonna go with some salted butter to again, just up the salt content. So this is a great way of preserving flavor, getting it all the way through the meat, adding a little bit more fat to a lean cut like chicken so it doesn't uh, dry out and uh, avoid the risk of burning. So let's start by getting our sticks of butter. I'm gonna go with either three or four. We'll see how we're doing on uh, volume here. This is just again, regular grocery store salted butter. I found this does not push us past the point on our salt content, especially when we are doing something same day versus the overnight dry brine, which with a little bit better forward planning on the weekend grocery list would have been completely solvable, but it turns out so good same day. Why not, right? You basically almost inject the equivalent of one stick in each breast. So we're gonna be sort of a stick on the left, a stick on the right, and then I want a little bit extra for the dark meat. Doesn't need that as much, but that's about what we will have. Let's turn this on. Nice thing about these induction tops is almost instantly you turn them on and butter is melting. That's why I quickly race to turn down the temperature to make sure I don't burn it while I'm just casually talking to you guys here. So we are gonna strain off uh, our compound butter for injecting. But what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put all of our rosemary in, make sure it gets down into the butter. We're gonna stir that once it's melted and try and let the natural oils from this rosemary infuse into our butter mixture. The next uh, couple ingredients are you know, optional. If you were going to chef school or you've been to chef school, you're gonna wanna skip this because you're about to cringe. Uh, a, I didn't have any more fresh aromatics other than the rosemary at my local grocery store. And so I either had the Costco garlic to work with or something like these prepared tubes. But this uh, is a great way to get some extra flavor. So I've got a little bit of lemongrass as well as uh, some garlic. And this, again, is just here to flavor our butter. If your taste buds will be able to discern butter infused with this, versus chopping it up ourselves with lemongrass, all the power to you. So just gonna add in about a tablespoon of our garlic and about a tablespoon of our lemongrass. Gonna let this simmer along for a couple minutes and I'll get a spoon, stir it up and we're ready uh, to strain it off, I'll rejoin you. Okay, our compound butter has been gently simmering along for about 10 minutes, just basically while I'm getting everything else ready to show you the next step. So I'm gonna strain this off now. I always miss a little bit on camera. Give Sarah proof. I'm a sloppy person. All right, no witnesses. No one's none the wiser. So our compound butter is ready. I'm just gonna let this cool a little bit before we inject it into our chicken. This gives us time to work on our rub. So I've already got an empty inside pepper can, and so I'm gonna wanna get a couple other ingredients. So one, we're gonna add some peppercorns. This is just from Costco. It's about a five peppercorn spice mix, a little bit of white, red, black, uh, and so it blends together really nice. This is often what I'm using. Speaking of Costco though, <laughs> we got Instacart, we got the wrong garlic. So instead of powdered garlic, we have some granulated garlic. So I'm just gonna break this down a little bit finer since that will just fall right off of our chicken. I'm gonna set my pepper can in to a fine setting, add a cap, grind that up a little bit. That looks good, so now we have a cap of granulated garlic. Add this into an empty container for mixing. We can pour any of the leftover garlic we didn't use back in for next time and switch to pepper. Go back a little bit coarser. And I'm gonna go for two capfuls of fresh cracked black pepper. And second cap. Done with a pepper cannon, but I'm still gonna use the cap for measuring. So I've got a little bit of cayenne 
and paprika. So you can adjust to your family's heat tolerance. We've got a little bit of a kick in our Alabama white sauce. So I'm gonna go about three parts paprika and one part cayenne. And this will help give it not only a nice mahogany color that'll set off really nice with the, the white sauce on top, the heat from the cayenne along with all the ingredients in our compound butter are gonna come together really nice in a savory with just a hint of zing. Okay, let's take a look at our first fire. That is looking good. So we've got a nice coal bed that these have broken down into. So I'm gonna to start to work them towards our back corner now. And since we're still a little ways from getting our chicken on, I'm gonna give it one more fire since at this point that'll die down just a little bit too much. And we really wanna get these surface temperatures up. Speaking of uh, surface temperatures, let me just grab my IR gun. So we definitely still have a uh, ways to go. So we could definitely use a second fire here. So that's got us up to about 556 degrees. As soon as our logs catch fire, we see nice open flame, let's install our door. And the door is just helping trap some heat. Speaking of some traps, some heat, I'm also gonna start trapping some heat by adjusting our vent. So just like on our control tower top or on my offset, this is controlling uh, wide open versus completely closed. So we don't want completely closed, but I'm gonna go for about 30% closed, uh, which is going to help slow down the rate of our fire burning down and trap a bit more heat in there. We are working with five inches of insulation. So even though the temperature, you know, on the inside I showed you was 500 degrees, we're getting, uh, we're getting 118 degrees uh, on the outside. And this, as you can see, uh, you could have your hand against this. This is one of the reasons I picked this oven, by the way, it's in a high traffic area where kids and things like that are walking by and I didn't want them to get scolded. If you have less insulation, not only uh, does that not work as well in the winter, but you have a potential issue of touching, you know, burning metal and scolding yourself. And so that's just a little extra care you need to have, but no worries here. Only time that gets really hot is when we're up in the eight, 900 degrees range. Gonna let this continue to build heat. Let's get back to work on our chicken. All right, we're nearly ready to get our chicken into the oven. Just taking a peek, I still see lots of open flame, so the fire's gonna die down just a little bit more. So I'll move our cast iron pan over. As you can see from the same day dry brine, I don't know if that comes through on camera, but there's a fair bit of liquid in the bottom of the pan, so that's showing that again, the salt has pulled some of that moisture out, and the skin is looking much drier than it did when we first put it in there. So first step, before we get to adding our rub, I'm going to do our compound butter. That way, any of the butter that spills, I'm going to smear along the outside of the skin and use that as a bit of a binder for our rub. So let's just get our meat injector ready here. Fill that up with our compound butter. But I like to try and come down here, lift up the skin so that I can have access to the breast and start to make a couple pockets in here that I'm going to inject. If you see here, this is puffing up. You see nice filling, going nice and slow. When I exploded that pork butt, that was me going a little bit too quick and aggressive. I feel like we're nearly there. Come over this side, get a little bit more in this breast. I don't know if that's as pronounced on camera as it is in real life, but you completely see that swell up with our compound butter that's slowly going to work its way throughout the muscle as we cook, dispersing. So it's not gonna be just one big kind of butter packet uh, and impart that flavor as well as the fat, which helps uh, impart the sensation of moisture or juicy when we bite into that. Do the same thing on our second one. Perfect, I see some spilling out the bottom. So that one is full. Oh my God, they're both so plump now. So we've taken two, Full pulls here on our breast. Let's see what we've got left to work with. I'm gonna have about one and a half, or just over one for our dark meat. So I think that three sticks of butter was perfect. Let's kind of flip this over and add a little bit to each side of our dark. So that feels like all I'm gonna get in there. I'm just gonna pour a little bit of our butter flavor profile on the bottom of our bird. We'll add our rub. Looks good, let's do our presentation side. Just a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of our pan. Help prevent burning. Let's go get this on. Remove our door. 
again with a surface temperature. So we are much hotter this time, right around where we would be doing almost for pizza. So 838 degrees. This is great. So our fire is dying down. Our cast iron pan is nice and cool. So what I'm going to do now is load in our chicken and we are going to rotate it, just managing which end I have facing the coals, depending on what I want to cook first. So I'm going to start by orienting the dark meat towards the coals and continue to check that. These ambient air temperatures are too hot for something like my meter probe, which is limited to just over 500 degrees ambient. So I'm going to use my Chef's Temp Final Touch X10 and pull this out about 45 minutes in and start to check for temperatures. Normally a bird this size will take about an hour. Let's grab our door, install that back on, and just let our dying fire continue to cook our chicken. Okay, we're about 45 minutes in. Let me show you the progress on our bird. So you'll see here in the first five minutes, I had just a touch too much flame as we've got a little bit of overdoneness here on the thigh and the top of our breasts. Our stone is still riding along. Good temperature, conduction, heat, so about 545. But if you take a peek back here at our fire, that's just barely humming along with what cold bed we have left. Let's take an internal temperature. Go right here into the white. 154, 155, that's exactly what we want. So I'm gonna get this off let it rest and let's go grab our Alabama white sauce. While that's resting, I'm also gonna add one more log because I just like to glaze my Alabama white sauce on top of the chicken. So this is optional, whether you wanna pour it over and have it cold or you wanna brush it on. I like to brush mine on. So I'm gonna add one more log, add on our Alabama white sauce. Again, if you wanted for final presentation, if this was on your cutting board, you could just drizzle a little bit of this over like this and have some set on your board. I like how it looks better when it's brushed all around. So that's what I'm gonna do versus having some intermittent coverage. So let me just add a little bit more, save the rest for our dipping sauce. Use a brush to smooth that all over. Looks like behind me, the wood that we've added has also caught, which will help make giving this a quick little blast glaze to help bake this onto the top of our chicken really fast. So I'll meet you over there in a second once we've got this ready. Rotate this around near our fire. All right, that looks mega. Let's go see how it tastes. So I'm not gonna lie, the smells that are coming off of this right now are deadly. Let's grab a knife. I'm gonna use a Dow Strong Chef knife just to cut this open. But this is where I can demonstrate the benefit of that work that we did earlier. When we removed the rib cage as well as that cartilage that was in the middle is that we can come down and get a nice clean slice. If you ever worried about how you slice your chicken, this is gonna make you look like a pro. That's just one quick cut. We've got our thigh piece out here. Repeat that and again. So now we've quartered our chicken and because we don't have the rib cage on the bottom, I'm able to take slices all the way. Hmm, let me do this so you can see. Into the light. Blinded by the light. Get a couple slices from our breast here. Perfect. And because we did that injection, if I just give that the squeeze, you see we have juices galore all the way through our white meat, which some people complain is dry, but they haven't been to our house. And soon, yours. Let's get a little bit of our dark. Set this aside for our taste test. Again. Get a little bit more sauce on the board if we want to dip in. Cheers. I'm a steak guy at heart. That's only because I've never had chicken this good. If I had to eat this for the rest of my life, that would be okay. I'm doing that again. No way. I'm taking this inside and not getting another piece. Then I'll tell you what's going on in the taste buds. Cheers again. <laughs> incredible. Like, incredible. So, okay, try and make sense of what's going on. So first, even though we brushed on, you can still hear if I run the nice knife and close that we have incredibly crispy skin. The smoke, ever so subtle, but wow, is it 
awesome. It's not too intense. That's easy to do on poultry where you over smoke something. But by having our fire die down, we had nice tame coals that are burning cleanly and we are mostly cooking with retained heat. It wasn't until the end when we threw on an extra log or two just to quickly glaze our Alabama white sauces. That's my favorite way to do it, that we had a full open fire going. And now we get the spices. So this is just a medley of flavors. So starting with what you notice first, which is our white sauce, that sweet sort of tang, followed by a little bit of heat on the back of the mouth, immediately starts to think you, immediately starts to send signals to your brain like, uh oh, I'm eating something spicy. But then as we get into the protein, we're greeted with just full depth flavor of chicken and the compound butter that we've added in almost cools it off and you're greeted with the aromatic profiles of everything that we added. The rosemary is the last thing I'm able to pick up and it just sort of sends the stress signal that might be going to your brain. Uh oh, I'm eating something too spicy. Everything chills out and comes together and I want to do it again. Speaking of it again, let's try our dark meat. Just like on a brisket, I always judge my cook on the flat. That's why I started on the white meat and the breast. So I know if the white's good, dark meat's going to be even better, but let's find out for sure. Stunning. You can do this on a variety of grills. In fact, pretty much this exact recipe is my chicken 101 video that I did on my Kamado Joe. But as I mentioned in the opening, you're gonna want maybe a pizza oven for this because that wood flavor and being able to get really close to the coals and spin our chicken just makes finishing different spots much easier and more practical. Plus, from a retained heat perspective, I've been hanging out here talking to you, preparing chicken, doors open, we are still rolling along at nearly 600 degrees, 570 degrees. So we can cook with retained heat for an incredible long time. If I had prepared earlier something like some hamburger buns for Sunday after church or something like that, I could throw that in the fire right now, let that die down a little bit more and still be able to take advantage of that retained heat that the five inches of insulation is providing. So it doesn't matter what you're cooking on, but if you have the opportunity to try this on a live fire, wood fired pizza oven, like my La Pizza Piccolo wood fired oven, you're gonna wanna give this a go. It's 100% worth it. That's it for today though. I'm James from Soak That Barbecue signing off. And remember, don't be afraid to fire it up. Oh, heavens. Hey again, <laughs> I said I was done, but I took that inside. Families had a chance to dive in and they stress that I tell you that's the best chicken I've ever made. So my reaction, their reaction, and I'm gonna take it. New personal best here on chicken happened today. You saw it here on Smoking Dad Barbecue. See you next time.